when we looked at the way that patients had progression of disease, we found that there was a component of patients who progressed with radiographic progression, so progression on CTs or bone scans, before they had PSA progression to warn us as clinicians that this was going to happen. And this was about 4.2% in those patients who were treated with darolutamide and 5% among patients who were treated with the ADT and placebo. This is really important because I think in general, we always have the concern that if we intensify our treatment, particularly if we intensify you know, hormonal activity sort of um, pathway, that we might push more patients to have more aggressive disease that behaves more like a neuroendocrine phenotype and might have radiographic progression before PSA progression. We did not see this. Um, and that was really, really important. And in, in fact, numerically, at least, there was a lower per percentage of patients who progressed radiographically in the darolutamide treated arm versus those patients who received placebo. Um, of course, all patients receiving ADT. So that was really important that we didn't see a divergence in the way that patients had progression of disease. Also importantly though, we did see that some patients progressed by scans before they had PSA progression. And so we as clinicians do need to think about some interval, temporal interval of, of repeating scans so that we make sure we do catch patients who are having progression of disease before they develop clinical symptoms. It is possible that they could do this progression or have this progression before the PSA warns us. And we know that patients who have clinical progression by pain in any state are always going to have a poorer prognosis or um, more difficult outcomes than those patients who are caught a little bit earlier. So routine scans, whether they're every six months or whether they're every year or whatever interval um, are gonna be important for us in clinical practice.